Hello and welcome to the Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen. I'm Matt Mercer, instructor for the Pathfinder School and the founder of the Black Hat Bushcraft Channel right here on YouTube. And once again today, I'm out in this beautiful setting. It's fall, the leaves are coming down, the colors are starting to change, and the temperatures are just a little cooler today. So I'm excited to be out here and cook up a delicious lunch. And today I'm doing something I've never tried before with this new recipe. Of course, with the new recipe comes another winner who will be receiving a box from Self-Reliance Outdoor fitters full of all the Pathfinder outdoor cooking gear that I use for this recipe today so I'm super excited to make that announcement here in just a minute but just before we get started I am going to be using a new piece of Pathfinder gear today and that is this folding stainless steel grill and this is a new product that is just releasing so I hope you guys will enjoy taking a look at this and I hope it'll give you a little idea of what this thing is capable of and if it's something that you're interested in but I'm looking forward to putting it to use for the first time here today. And with that, let's talk about today's recipe, which I think a lot of people are gonna be excited about. So what is probably one of, if not the most popular of foods, especially in the US? Pizza, of course. Everybody loves a good pizza. And today's winning recipe was submitted to us by Chris Hayes. Congratulations, Chris. And he has given us an idea on how to cook pizzas, little personal pizzas inside the folding stainless skillet. So I'm super excited to try this today. I have never tried making pizza in a folding skillet before, but with some simple ingredients, I think this is gonna turn out really well. So once again, congratulations, Chris. Of course, you're gonna be receiving a box from Self-Reliance Outfitters with all of the Pathfinder outdoor cooking gear that I used to make your recipe today. I'm excited, looking forward to it. I hope you guys will come along. Let's get started cooking right now. So the first step is I have to clean out a spot to make my fire and we have to collect up materials to build that fire. I'll clean out a spot and you guys go and collect all the materials. Ready? Let's go. Good thing is it rained really hard last night so everything's pretty damp and that makes me feel better about starting a fire here on the forest floor. It's been so dry this summer it's been kind of dangerous to light big fires so this will be nice. So the fire pit's ready. Where's the kindling? You guys didn't get it. All right, I'll do it again. Here we go. <laughs> so I've gone ahead and just made myself a simple little platform here and I've got a couple of little piles of kindling and I'm just going to create a little V shaped fire lay and I have a third pile of kindling which will just come right up here on the top and I'm going to use a mini inferno once again just break that open kind of fuzz it out a little bit that'll be easy to hit with sparks from my ferro rod I'm just going to set that right in here and this will be an easy ignition. All right, so let's get our fire lit. Now, while my fire is burning down to a bed of coals to cook on, I wanna talk about some of these ingredients. Anytime you make a pizza, obviously you need something to make crust. You need sauce cheese and toppings. In the recipe that Chris submitted, he calls for flour tortillas, just like this. So I have some small pan-sized tortillas that I can lay down in the bottom of this folding skillet and then top it with sauce, cheese, and other toppings. But when I went to the store, I also found these, which are pan-sized little pizza crusts. And these are quite a bit thicker than a tortilla. And they also are slightly concave to hold the sauce and cheese and toppings and stuff. So I'm gonna give these a try today as well. The next step obviously would be to add the sauce. And so I just have a simple jar of pizza sauce. You could take this out of the jar if you don't wanna carry glass, put it in some type of a plastic container, that's up to you. But simple jar of pizza sauce today. Now for cheese, you could go with something simple like this pre-shredded mozzarella cheese and it's just in a zipper bag. If you're gonna be in a base camp, have access to a cooler or something like that, this would be easy to store. Also, in the recipe, Chris calls for string cheese, and a lot of times you can keep string cheese for a period of time without refrigeration. So if you're gonna pack this in and you wanna go with something that you're not as uh, worried about melting and things like that, you can use this mozzarella string cheese. Of course, no pizza would be complete without some pepperoni. 
You could buy a pepperoni roll, but you can also just carry pre-sliced pepperoni. This stuff does not have to be refrigerated. In fact, it was hanging in the store um, unrefrigerated, so it will be fine. Also, you can add toppings like olives, mushrooms, peppers, onions. This is completely personalized. You can make this how you want. For now, let's process down this string cheese. So I'm thinking you could process this both ways. You could probably cut it lengthwise and make small shreds that way. Or you can just cut it into pieces like this, which may be the easiest thing. That broke my heart right there to see that piece fall on the ground. I'm not worried about the five second rule. I'm gonna get it up here in a minute. My two little guys off the ground ain't even got no dirt on them, so they're gonna be just fine. So I'll just process down one more little piece here, and that should be plenty for the first pizza, if not two. All right, so let's go ahead and get this first pizza set up, and I'm gonna use the tortilla first, since that's the recipe that Chris submitted to us. I'm gonna just lay one of these out here in my pan. I have my stainless steel spork down here. And I'll just use that to spread some of this pizza sauce. Just have this Prego pizza sauce. Just smear that stuff out right here on my pizza. I'm already hungry for this. I don't eat pizza a whole lot, even though I love it. It's just one of those things I try not to eat too much. I like a lot of sauce on my pizza, so I'm going to go that route. That looks good. So I'm just taking some of this cheese that I cut up here and laying it around. Looks to me like with this tortilla, one piece of string cheese would be about perfect for one of these pizzas. Now I'm not going to be shy about the cheese. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra on here. That looks good. So at this point we have our crust, our sauce, our cheese. So now we have to have a little pepperoni. And this is very simple to work with because this stuff is just pre-sliced. I don't see any reason to bring the whole roll out here that you're gonna have to slice up. And just make life simple and go ahead and buy the pre-sliced pepperoni. That looks good right there. And since I have it, I'm gonna go ahead and take some more of this cheese right here. And just lay around on top of my pizza. And there we go. Very cool. I think this is gonna turn out well. I'm gonna take the top, place it here, and now we gotta get the grill set up. So I've gone ahead and got out my little grill here, and this comes in its own pouch. It's kind of rubberized on the inside, which is nice, because I'm sure after I use this thing, I'm gonna to wanna to put it in something like that to keep, keep it off my other gear. And just simply fold out the legs on this grill, just like this, and it'll be perfectly sized for my skillet. And just set this thing here, and with my shovel, you could use a stick or whatever. I'm just gonna kind of rake a few coals up under here. I definitely don't wanna to try to use too much heat at one time, because I imagine it'd be easy to burn these pizzas. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place my skillet right here on the grill and turn the handle to the back so it doesn't get too hot. And just so I can kind of melt the cheese and stuff on top, I'm just gonna lay a few of these hot coals right up here on top of the skillet. And the nice thing about this Pathfinder folding skillet is it has this rim on the lid. So it allows you to place some coals and stuff up here and it kind of retains that up top. Keeps it out of the pan. So that's a really nice feature about this skillet. I'm going to go ahead and take the remaining material here and keep my fire going so I can keep producing coals as I go. All right, we're officially cooking. so I've given this about five to six more minutes and I think it's looking great the cheese is starting to run off the pizza a little bit so I'm just gonna take the skillet and set it here off the fire and let the pizza cool for just a minute I am gonna knock those coals off the top here as best I can and that'll just keep the ash and stuff from getting into my pizza I'm gonna just set that over here on this log for a few minutes let that cool off and then we'll check this pizza out 
All right, so I've given this pizza several minutes to cool down. My pan has cooled down. Let's take a look. Yeah, man, that's looking good. That's going to be some good eating right there. Hoping it's not stuck. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, that's going to be good. It's not as crisp as regular pizza. And I probably put a little too much sauce on it. But it's going to be delicious. All right, so I got to tell you guys, I am all about trying out this pizza right now. And it's had a moment to cool. And it's going to be pretty messy, I can tell. Because I probably put too much sauce and too much... Uh, cheese on it so I'm gonna try to just eat it with the sport and I think that those other pizza crusts will probably be better for this because they're more concave and it'll hold the toppings in better than this but it doesn't have to be pretty to be delicious give thanks all right let's give this thing a test mmm you guys know it's gonna be good it's pizza. Mm. Pepperoni, melted mozzarella cheese, pizza sauce. How can you go wrong? And the tortilla actually does a good job of making a pizza crust. I mean, it sort of has that texture once it gets a little cr crunchy on the bottom. This might be my messiest recipe. be honest with you guys I want to eat this one quick because I'm excited about the second one save the piece for you guys mm. bite it all right so the first pizza was our tester pizza this time I'm going all in and I'm going to use these official pizza crusts and again I think these are going to be better suited because they are a little bit concave and I think they're going to hold the toppings just a little better you can see how that looks it actually has a line for the crust and I want you to watch this look at that fit man it was made for it and so our next step is to get out the pizza sauce and I'm gonna be careful with the pizza sauces this time I went kind of heavy on the tortillas and I did want to use the tortillas since that's the recipe that Chris submitted but I think if you have access to these pizza crusts this is the way to go right here now, to keep things simple this time, I'm just going to use this pre-shredded mozzarella cheese instead of slicing up the string cheese. But again, I wanted to do the recipe exactly as it was submitted. So now I'm just kind of freelancing with the idea. And I think this is an awesome, awesome thing because these are lightweight ingredients. And for the most part, you can carry stuff that don't need to be refrigerated if you choose to do so. I think that's a little too much pepperoni. What am I talking about? That's crazy. So my personal favorite ingredient to add to pepperoni pizza is pineapple. And I know, again, some of you guys are going to lose it. And some of you guys are going to love this. But pineapple and pepperoni are meant to be together because you have the sweetness of the pineapple. And you have the spiciness of the pepperoni. And you have the zesty flavor from the sauce. And it just doesn't get better than that. So I'm adding a little bit of pineapple to this pizza. And I hope y'all won't turn off the video with that. Those of you that know, you'll know. And haters are going to hate, I guess. But a little pineapple on this pizza is going to go a long way for me. And of course, just a little extra cheese never hurts. All right, so I'm kind of going all in on the fire here too because I have kind of let everything die down which is fine because I think I've got enough coals left to cook up this pizza. I'm going to get that in place here. And I'm just going to take again some of these coals from down below and just sprinkle them on top of my skillet. Just add a little bit of heat up top to help melt that cheese up. And in about five to ten minutes I should be good to go. I'm going to add a little extra coal this time compared to last time. You can see when I fan with the shovel, there's quite a bit of orange glowing coals in there. That just makes, makes me feel a little more comfortable that I've got enough heat to take care of this pizza. Okay, 
so I've given this pizza plenty of time to cool down. As you can see, I've already reclaimed my grill and that's cooled off now. The bottom of the skillet is actually still pretty warm to the touch. This skillet has a nice heavy bottom on it, so it retains heat for a long time. I think it's time to do a reveal. Let's check out this final pizza. Yeah, man, that looks good and it smells mighty good too. Oh yeah, I can't wait for this. My first pizza was the appetizer. And this is the real deal right here. Let's take a look and see if I can slide the whole pizza out. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. All right, so after a lot of work, here we go. Our second pizza and the one that I'm most excited about. And I got to tell you guys, I'm impressed with this little pizza crust. Tastes really good. So yeah, this will definitely be, as I like to say, a do-againer. And I appreciate Chris giving me this idea because I've never really thought to make pizza in a skillet like this. But it really has turned out well. The tortilla pizza was good, but the crust pizza is really good too. So if I had the option, I'd go with the crust just because it cooked up a little nicer and it tastes a little bit more like pizza. But uh, either way you go, I think you guys would be pleased with this. I mean, how often do you have hot pizza in the woods in camp? It's just not something that you think a lot of times about cooking in the woods, but with the Pathfinder skillet, a few simple ingredients that you don't even have to refrigerate really, you can have fresh pizza right in camp. It's good. I almost feel bad about eating in front of you guys today, but since y'all didn't pick up all the kindling, made me do it, pizza's all mine. All right, so enough of me torching you guys out here eating fresh cooked pizza in this beautiful camp in this fall weather. I'm really enjoying this. I hope you guys will take down this recipe and that you'll venture out to your favorite spot in the woods and cook yourself up some of this delicious skillet pizza. I think this would be a great recipe, especially if you were carrying kids out in the woods or if you were having a family uh, camping trip or something like that. Each person could have their own custom pizza with the things that they like on it. Of course, pepperoni and pineapple is always going to be best. But anyway, um, I hope you guys will take this one down and get a chance to, to use it in the woods very soon. Don't forget, if you have your own personal personal favorite camp recipe submit it to us to the email address listed down below and we'll enter you into our data bank of recipes every time I come out to film an episode of Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen I pull from that data bank of recipes so once you're in there it stays until the time that I should use your recipe so you just never know your favorite camp recipe may be the next episode of Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen so don't forget go ahead and get your favorite recipe sent over to us and we'll look forward to seeing that email coming in from you thank you guys for your time and interest and support. I look forward to the next episode of some delicious cooking right out here in the woods. I hope you'll join me. Until then, take care, be safe. I'll see you soon.